Frustrating to see it there. I that. To think the view, you know, used to be kind of cool view standard. I mean, they should grow up and better. Some people do. I was supposed to see maybe snow more. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow night. And like I said, it's going to be down to 20 degrees. I have to be in bed for quiet. It's 1130. Yeah, but the amount was like one inch. Yeah, so it should be. And I'm going to bring out all the drive, so they shouldn't be stopped. I'm just worried about them stopping me. I'm not worried about the amount of snow. I'm just worried about them saying no. The amount of it was very, very light. We'll see. I'll stay all night up there as long. Sure, why not, huh? Yeah. Do some worship.
Okay. Well, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessing of being able to meet together in your house, Lord, because wherever you are, it's church. Father, thank you that as we gather together, we can learn from one another. We can learn from you. We can worship together. We have accountability. Father, your plan for church is beautiful. And I pray, Lord, that we would continue to keep it that way. That we would honor you by doing what your word says. Loving others and and continuing to just move forward in the things that you would have us to. Father, I know at times it gets difficult and we can get discouraged when we look around and we see the things uh, in this world seemingly go unchecked. Sin um, causing so many problems. But Father, we know that you are coming back. We also know, Lord, that your word is alive. It is powerful. It can bring health to our bones and Today, Lord, I pray that as we're in your word, that we would hide it in our hearts, that we might not sin against you, that we would uh, really study to show ourselves approved, workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing your word, but Lord, not stopping there, but sharing the good news with others, that they also might understand how much you love them, how much you have forgiven them, and how much you desire to bring them home to heaven with you forever. Lord, we thank you for this time. We give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, We wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, a strong what we're here to do is just wait upon the Lord. You know, the scripture says that as we wait upon the Lord, he renews our strength. And I like that because there's days that you just feel kind of burned up or burned out or just exhausted by the things of life. But you know, whenever we spend time with the Lord, man, it is so refreshing and so renewing. And we just need to keep hanging on to him and be encouraged by him. Blessed be your name, found in a desert. 
desert place Walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Oh, every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise And when the darkness closes in
of pain Mercy reigns and never dies There's a place
truly do owe you everything. Lord, you gave your life for us. And this morning, Lord, we give you our praise. We acknowledge, Lord, that our life belongs to you. And Lord, we thank you so much that you did die, taking our place on the cross so that we, Lord, might have a place at your table. This morning, Lord, I am grateful that although we are still here on this earth, we have a place here at your table, at church, worshiping you, loving on you, and Lord, just enjoying being in your presence with your family. We give you this time. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> <clears throat> prayer request, Operation Christmas Child. Continue to pray for that program. A couple more prayer requests, all right. Yeah, I think some of those are there, so that's good. Um, continue to pray for our nation. We'll get into some of that as we uh, cruise along here. Um, our allies, continue to pray for the nations that we are at peace with and that they will continue to stay that way. And then, of course, be fervent in your prayers about family, friends, and just folks that we know along the Klamath River. We really do need to, to really, in a sense, buckle down and make it a point of not just inviting them to church, but sitting down with them and sharing our testimony, sharing what the Lord can do for them. And that uh, because of the day and the age that we live and so many things that are being fulfilled uh, in the word. Man, I really believe um, that the return of the Lord is nearer than ever. Definitely we're closer than we were yesterday. Um, so we need to just continue to, to encourage folks to come and continue uh, to uh, encourage them to, <clears throat> to keep on track with the Lord. So other prayer requests, um, again, pray for uh, Sunday school and youth groups that the Lord would continue to give our kids direction and that um, uh, Robin and David would uh, know exactly how to address each and every little thing that comes up. <clears throat> um, Alice's husband, uh, Jim, with cancer. Uh, Jimmy with back problems. Dory, um, her cancer. And that her knee would continue to recover. Um, with the treatment, uh, Larry Gabbert with cancer, Susie Muckridge with cancer, uh, Jody and medical, um, Frank and his cancer, and that the new radiation treatments will work and that things would go smoothly there. Um, Stan in Virginia for uh, health issues. Um, continue to pray for my dad and uh, uh, Denny and Donna, Robin's mom and dad. Got to go see my dad um, yesterday and celebrate his birthday. Um, and because we're all trying to lose weight, um, we didn't buy a big old cake. What we did was we got together and uh, made my mom's um, chocolate chip cookies. And we were probably going about it wrong. And it's almost like you could hear her in the background saying, what are you doing? <laughs> But it was kind of fun to, uh, to do that and have that time with my dad and then go out to dinner um, yesterday. So pray for um, Judy Peabody's mom for health, uh, Bert Hackett with cancer, uh, Terry Everett in his medical, Dean with medical, um, Bob as he's traveling um, to Colorado, and uh, uh, Sarah with back problems, Dolly, and um, the issues that she's having with her back, as well as her knee. Um, the upcoming surgery for Celia, Vicky's sister on the 28th. I went out to Marika last night and met Karen there for dinner. Uh -huh. and she's on her way down to take care of Celia after the surgery. Which is on this Thursday. Good. So keep praying for that, that that will go smoothly. 
Uh, Regina, pray for uh, her husband, Gene, and his salvation. Uh, David's online ministries. Um, Judy with the unspoken request. Um, and then also Gustav. Um, he's going into daycare. And that's always kind of a, you know, when you're giving up your child because you have to go back to work. Um, that's difficult for mom, but it's also difficult for child as well. Um, but uh, hopefully it is a good place for him to be and um, it, it'll go smoothly there. So uh, pray also for Dan uh, as he goes to some of his medical appointments and just uh, some of the things that he has got to deal with. So continue to, to pray for him. Um, Jody, a friend with uh, some medical stuff. Uh, again, Grandpa Jeff uh, for continued uh, recovery. Um, Brian Crocker with medical. Uh, Auntie Alice with COVID. Um, any word there? She's doing fine. Now. Oh, good. That's wonderful. So that's a good report. Thank you, Lord. Um, she's a sweetheart. Um, Ed and Debbie Jacobson, just a, a personal prayer request there. Um, Debbie Taylor uh, and her medical needs, um, continue to pray for her. Um, Barbara Geidel is the one that I forgot last week. Um, she had a friend uh, with COVID or has a friend with COVID, so continue to pray for that friend. Um, Dory's niece, you remember we talked about her having back surgery um, and some of the, the degenerative type issues that she had and then the fall and the rods failing. Well, they have done the surgery. They've done well um, in that surgery. She is up and walking, and you know they do like to get you up and out of bed um, in a hurry. And uh, they find that the recovery goes faster. But continue to pray for for that little one. Um, Evelyn, <clears throat> uh, hip surgery, got COVID, and now the family's not able to visit. Oh, poor thing. So uh, pray for Evelyn, and then um, Candice with a lupus flare-up. Um, pray for that as well. Um, any other issues? Robin. Oh, I just have um, some prayer praises. You guys, thank you so much for praying for um, Dan and Jeff and We'll see. Yeah, we'll see who's yep. going to have a birthday party. Yeah. So, Dolly, I saw your hand up. Uh, I've got a granddaughter and a her husband and four great grandchildren all got with COVID. Oh, oh my goodness. That oh. is. It's a family thing and we got to share, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went to visit so. the other night and the big boy came out and said, You can't stay here, you got to go. <laughs> probably a good choice. Yeah. Yeah, but but it's, it's tough when somebody gets COVID and we kind of have to shun them. No, I'm kidding. We get to pray for them. So, yeah, we'll pray for your family. Regina. This is from Buster Everett in Buster, Texas. Um, 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Just continued recovery there. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. So, David. So this is a praise slash prayer request. Um, as you guys know, I'm on the app, especially Clapper. And in the last week, I've gotten approached for people <coughs> to actually interview me, like on Clapper to, you know, get me more exposure and also kind of like, you're very interesting. Let's, you know, let's highlight this. First one's going to be this Tuesday um, before karaoke. I know that you guys don't tote me much of a singer, <laughs> but I started singing and this guy, you know, like he went live with, you know, another pastor and they started talking to me and he was just like, oh, wow, you know, and I'm not saying this to toot my own horn. Wow, you're incredible. We need to feature you, you know, and so that's this Tuesday and then a few others. Um, one may be during the Sunday morning because that's when they do it, but it's kind of like it's a how has your faith it affected your life and this isn't like just Christianity this is like all these different people that are interviewed and they usually do it at 1 o'clock eastern time which of course okay. is 10 o'clock our time so but just keep me in prayer because I mean it's like I know I know that you guys are going to laugh at this but this really is true I get stressed out I don't do well with like interviews you know and stuff and so when people are questioning me and asking me questions on the spot. I like things to be a little bit more rehearsed or kind of know what the questions are beforehand. Yeah. So, but, so just keep me in prayer for that, but it's exciting. And we're actually going live right now. That's so good. Say so, hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we are live this morning with some new equipment, some different stuff. Um, we're hoping that it continues to work because of some of the issues that we've had through doing it through phone and downloads and it's just been kind of um, a bit of a problem. So this, um, we tried it out earlier in the week and it seems to be working. So hopefully that will continue. Um, but yes, pray for the outreach ministries that we do have. And even just not only in our community here, but even as we go live, there's a lot of people that don't have good churches to go to. Mm -hmm. And they need to hear the word. They need to have some hope. So yeah, continue to pray for those things. So other uh, requests, Jody. Just the Rivers family. Yeah, yeah, continue to pray for, for that family as a loss of dad and, and of course, a good friend for, for many. So, yeah, yeah, continue to pray for that. Robin, you have another? Oh, um, um, what was it? Oh, I was going to say there and um, just pray for, um, I don't always like pray for myself, but I'm going to meet with Derek today too because <laughs> I'm having um, numbness in these two fingers not as much in here and a lot of pain in my arm and I'm hoping that it's just a pinch nerve you know mm -hmm. I, I hope it's not turning into <clears throat> yeah. but I'm just praying that your it can just get in there and work you over and, and, yeah, <laughs> just make it work uh. it's been hard to sit there and type this week and I put a lot of medicine and stuff on it and try to work this out but it's like work I need you to work so I can work <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so good luck anybody else Okay. Well, Father, thank you so much that <clears throat> you hear our prayers. Lord, when you died on the cross, the veil of the temple was rent. It was torn in two. It was your invitation for everyone to come boldly before your throne. And Father, I am so grateful that when we come, we can ask. Your word says that when we ask, we need to do it humbly and not selfishly. And then, Father, you will grant us the desires of our hearts, especially, Lord, when we acknowledge you in every area of our life. So, Father, let us trust you. Let us put these things into your hands and these people into your hands that they might be healed, touched, restored, renewed. Lord, for those that do not know you yet, Lord, Again, please, this week, would you send your spirit to minister to them, to share with their hearts, open their eyes so that they might see and get saved. So, Father, we lift each of these requests to you, knowing, Lord, that you will not remain silent. You will continue to work. You will continue to move. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Well, Bible study, men's prayer breakfast, um, this Friday, 7 a.m. and Waffles. Waffles, and you're teaching? Or was that this last week? Last week was pancakes. Waffles is coming Friday. Right, but weren't you given the, the study? Yeah, I'll probably do it again unless Bob comes back. Unless Bob I comes back. <laughs> well, good. Good for you. Well, so. okay. I guess nobody left. So. <laughs> that is a good <laughs> sign. <laughs> that's a, you know, that's kind of the way it works at some of the rescue missions. The teaching first, the food <laughs> second. So, so keep praying for, for that ministry there. Because we need good, strong, godly men um, to, to lead. Uh, continue to pray for the Sunday school and the youth ministries uh, with Robin and David. Um, and then um, we'll go ahead and uh, <clears throat> we'll let them go off to their Sunday school as appropriate. Or did they? You got, you got kids? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and dismiss you guys to go there. And... Uh, <clears throat> See if they wandered in, <laughs> since they have the keys to the building. So we're going to talk a little bit as we continue with our um, eyes on Israel. Um, <clears throat> we're going to take a look at some of the world events and things like that real quick. And uh, I would encourage you to turn in or come next week because we're going to talk a little bit uh, more in depth about um, not just what the Antichrist is going to be like, but also is there somebody on the planet that fits that picture? Um, and we're going to tie that in uh, a little bit next week to this stuff. Um, so, eyes on Israel. We all know that um, Russia, uh, bless you, uh, that Russia is on the border of Ukraine and they've got a couple hundred thousand troops and, and a medical uh, tent and all that stuff set up. So um, what is going on? Well, <clears throat> we have been told over and over by our country that Russia is going to attack. They're going to attack. It's going to be the 16th. Um, even they said they gave a specific date as though they know the heart of Putin. It is almost like our country is trying to push him into this war or force his hand in some kind of way that he chooses one direction or another. But here's the thing, whether Putin goes to war or he doesn't, he wins. It doesn't matter. Why? Let's talk about some of that. Um, <clears throat> if he would have attacked on the 10th of February, I would have understood that to be more of a, uh, a political, a personal thing, because that was his uh, father's birthday. And so here you go, Dad. Here's a nice little present. I'm going to attack Ukraine for you. Um, uh, but there's, there's no attack, none on the 16th either. Um, so, what, what is all this about? It's about power. Um, we know and have watched Putin for years. Uh, he is very much into control. He's uh, changed the laws of the land so that he can remain uh, the president there for uh, essentially, um, like, forever. <laughs> um, and so he, he wants power. But who is, for all? essentially all intent and purposes, who is the superpower in the world? Yeah. America. America has really, that's what he's wanting to be. Uh, he's wanting to, but the superpower has always been America and we have always fought for peace. But there started to become a significant change when we left Afghanistan. Who rushed into Afghanistan? China. Why? because there's billions, if not trillions of dollars in lithium there. And they rush right in. We, our, our leaving was just a mess. 
uh, to say the least. Um, and it really, in a sense, was a bit of an embarrassment to the strength of America and the ability of America to do something cleanly and uh, with precision. It, it was kind of a, a bit of a debacle. Well, um, I believe that the rest of the world looked at that and said, oh, America is becoming weak. America is no longer the superpower, so who is going to step up? And I believe that Putin is looking at this from not just a financial uh, issue, but also um, a position of power. Um, <clears throat> when Trump was in office, uh, how many bullies were out there trying to push their way around? Not many. Uh, we came in, um, or when he came in, we, we took care of business. And that's changed. That's changed. We're into diplomacy now, which does fit what the scriptures say when it comes to end times uh, events and things like that. So, <clears throat> um, it seems like the most that we've said, which I think this was on Friday, that, uh, that Biden said this, if Russia attacks Ukraine, it will be met with overwhelming international condemnation. Overwhelming condemnation. Wow, that's all you're going to do? So Russia, essentially, we're not going to do anything to you, but we're just going to say, oh, shame on you. Yes, you're right, shame on you. Um, and we'll do it internationally. Everybody will join together in saying shame on you. That doesn't really seem to work. Um, that's not how you handle uh, that kind of a thing. So... <clears throat> um, as Russia looks at America and sees weakness, China also has seen the same thing and would look to perhaps do the same thing, but with Taiwan and some of the other countries, Iran. We've talked about the fact that the U.S. and uh, Israel have been um, or had been holding some secret kind of military drills to prepare for Iran. And we talked a few weeks ago now that Iran was only a f literally a couple months away. Well, now they're only a few weeks away from having a nuclear weapon. And we are sitting down at the table with them, or at least trying to, to negotiate. And yet they're continuing to enrich that uranium. And as soon as they have that nuclear weapon, they have said, we are going to wipe Israel off the map. We want to do that. Uh, we do not want to deal with them. And so we're seeing some of these um, countries tend to step up and we're saying nothing more than we're going to condemn you. Okay, so we're going to say shame on you. Uh, it's really not um, doing much. So, <clears throat> so how does this build up for um, uh, the military of Russia on the border of Ukraine. How does Putin get um, power by this buildup and this thing? Well, I think a couple of ways. For one, it shows his strength. Putin has a massive amount of uh, military uh, weaponry. Uh, it may not be the best of the best, um, although they do have a, um, a uh, incredible missile, supersonic type missile. We don't. Um, but they do, uh, but they have massive, massive military. So they can overcome um, by a tremendous amount of people uh, in that area in Europe. Um, additionally, not only does he have that kind of power, but he also has power financially. What do I mean? 60% of the... Um, <clears throat> of the energy that is pouring into Europe comes directly from Russia. Russia makes a tremendous amount of money with its oil exports and its energy exports to Europe. Iran also does. You might recall that, uh, oh, it's what, a couple of years ago, um, Russia, Putin turned the lights off in a sense, in Ukraine, in the middle of winter, which it is right now, it's cold. Um, and so 
grasp. You know, you say, well, how do we solve this problem with Russia and Ukraine? Well, let's have them join NATO. And so they have an invitation, Ukraine does, to join NATO. When this buildup happened, America says, see, Russia is building up on the border of Ukraine. You need to join. And Russia would say, if you do that, we're going to turn off the lights and we're going to turn off the heat. Don't do that. We've done it before. Don't do that. And then the president of Ukraine basically said it earlier in the week, okay, we're not going to join NATO. This is just not worth it. But then he changed his mind a couple days later and said, well, maybe. But what would that really benefit us? Why are we fighting so, so much towards getting Ukraine into NATO? Why are we pushing them in that direction? To me, it's pretty simple. It means that as a NATO ally, we get to put our bases and our military in Ukraine. We get to have that there versus Russia. This is a power struggle between who is going to be number one. America, are we going to continue to be number one and try and keep the peace? Or does Russia have everybody over a barrel? How come we haven't heard much from Russia, especially people like Germany? Because they get nearly 100% of their energy from Russia. If you control the oil, you control just about everything. And so... Um, in the late 80s, the Warsaw Agreement with Poland um, was uh, set up in such a way that the USSR could keep um, what they had a hold of in Europe. When Poland then became part of NATO, that was a real slap in the face to Putin. He doesn't want to see that again, so he's going to do anything and everything he can, whether it's political, financial, or he just uh, says, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm going to uh, take over and, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to make you do this. That's, that's his direction. He wants to become number one. He wants to be uh, in control. And so joining NATO is um, kind of a, an interesting choice for Ukraine. Personally, I don't believe that they will join. I think that they are afraid that the lights will get turned off and that they will freeze to death like they did a, a couple or a few years ago. So I don't think that um, Biden uh, is, by condemning him, um, by doing this, really moving his heart away from that. This is going to be a personal choice for him, but it's also going to show his strength around the world. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see. Either way, whatever happens there, Russia is going to win because Europe is dependent upon Russia. And as he continues to move his troops, including his uh, ships into the Black Sea, it's just a little jaunt across the pond and he's right there at Turkey and can be pulled down into the Middle East, of which they already are pulled down into the Middle East anyway because of the, the conflicts that we see uh, in Syria and some of those issues and him trying to keep peace. We know what the scriptures say. The scriptures say that there will be a hook in the jaw of Russia to pull them down into the Middle East. And with Iran being very close to a nuclear weapon, with China able to... Um, attack uh, Taiwan, and it doesn't seem like we're doing much uh, about that. This is going to be and is um, an interesting, interesting situation. So we will see um, what happens. Now, in all of this, um, who has been the negotiator of peace? Who has been the one that went and sat down <clears throat> with Russia, went, sat down with Putin and said, we need to discuss this. And then after that discussion, supposed agreements were made. And then this person went and sat down with the president of Ukraine and said, I have brought you peace. I have negotiated peace. Interesting. 
We're going to talk about that gentleman next week. I don't want to give up the name <laughs> right now, but we're going to tie that person into um, what Daniel chapter 8 says concerning the Antichrist and what he will be like. And so we'll talk about some of that next week. So as these things begin to unfold, are we supposed to worry about them? No. Our job is to pray. Realize that the time is short. And what does that look like? Well, we're going to talk about that today in Romans chapter 13. But our promise, our yea and amen, <clears throat> is Matthew 11, 28 and 29. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden or burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. What are we supposed to do? Go to the Lord. We don't have to worry about all this. Where are we going? We are going to heaven. Where is our hope? It is in Jesus. All we have to do is look around, see the signs of the times, and just say, thank you, Lord, that your return is near. But also, Lord, help us to reach out to other people so that they are not left behind, so that they don't miss out on the joy and the blessings that we're going to have in heaven. And then you and I just to get, get to just rest, rest in the Lord and rest in um, Him. And when um, your heart is heavy um, and whatnot, like Judy today, your heart being heavy, rest in the Lord. You know, I know that you lost your friend and that's a difficult thing. Um, and we didn't add that to the prayer list, but here we go. Pray for Judy and just the family. She lost a friend um, this week. And, but pray, when your heart is heavy, go to the Lord. <clears throat> when you go to the Lord, he lifts us up and he gives us that rest. So hang in there. Birthdays, um, none that I know of this week. However, I will say this, my son's soon-to-be mother-in-law, uh, her 60th birthday is on the 22nd. So 2 22 of 2022. And uh, I think they were maybe planning something for her at 2.22.22 seconds. No, <clears throat> they had a really nice birthday for Lynn um, this weekend. And so anyway, it's her, her golden. She's 60 years old and uh, anyhow, um, so... Happy birthday, Lynn. <laughs> uh, giving, of course, you know, the box, the box, and the box. And now we're going to turn to Romans chapter 13. Abounding in love. <clears throat> now, you guys all know about this. You've probably been paying attention to the news over the last month and some of the things that we've talked about um, and we're going to talk about what it means to, if we are going to be abounding in love, what does that really look like in a very practical way? Uh, not just towards one another. Anybody know? Caesar Nero. Caesar Nero. And that guy was psychotic. That guy was unbelievable. And now you're asking the people, <clears throat> the church, to be obedient to Caesar and Nero? It would be very easy to say, no, 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 no. I'm going to obey God rather than man. But what does Paul say? Everyone must submit to governing authorities. It doesn't just mean whoever's the president or whoever's the king or that kind of thing. It says governing authorities, meaning if there is somebody over you, then you need to submit to them. Whether it's your boss, whether it's your mom and dad, whether it is uh, the mayor or the governor or the president or the king, whoever it is, we need to submit to all authority, all governing authority. 
For the authority, or their authority, comes from God, and those in position of authority have been placed there by God. Who put them there? God. So, if you're saying, I'm going to obey God rather than man, and yet you defy government against what God is saying, then uh, you're really kind of in a, in a battle with God. It, it's difficult for us sometimes to separate this, but the Lord would say, we wrestle not against what? Flesh and, Flesh and blood. blood. But against principalities and powers. <clears throat> so, are you saying then that a person like Hitler was ordained by God? Yes. If it wasn't for Hitler, would Israel be a nation? No. The Ottoman Empire or the European Empire would still continue to rule that area. But what happened when Hitler came on the scene? He persecuted the Jews. The rest of the world came against him and said, that's wrong. What you are doing is shameful. You can't just kill people because you don't like them. That is wrong. And because of the devastation that Hitler brought, it brought a very uh, significant love, care to the people of Israel like no other time in history. And what happened? Well, through a manner of speaking, the scientists, Jewish scientists, came up with bombs that could really take care of things. And <clears throat> because of those um, inventions, they were given the choice by the Ottoman Empire to say, hey, um, what do you want? We just want our homeland back. We just want Israel back. By that time, Israel was a wasteland because what it, it had been uh, treated like by its enemies. It had been wiped out. Just about everything burned to ground. And they said, we don't care. We want it back. And they became a nation again, May 14th, 1948. When God sets up authority, we have to remember that it's there for his purpose to fulfill his plan. We don't always see it, but when we look back, hindsight is always 2020. When we look back over history, then it becomes clear to us. When we look back over the history of our own life, it gives us the ability sometimes then to, to say, okay, Lord, I see that you helped me here. I see that you went to work there. I see that you took this thing that seemed to be so devastating and you manipulated it in such a way that, man, I, we're going to be blessed. So, <clears throat> Lord, I'm going to trust you in all of this. It's not an easy thing to do, even when our government is the tyrant. What about Daniel? Chapter 3 of Daniel says that uh, <clears throat> King Nebi created a very selfish act, didn't he? Um, and when, uh, <clears throat> or actually not in Daniel chapter 3, not so much Daniel, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were told, no, when the music plays, you were to bow down to the idol, to the statue. That particular statue representing all of the world's history. But when you hear that music, you are to bow down. And what did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do? Not going to happen. Whenever we're told to disobey God, have no other gods before you, then it's okay to dis uh, disobey government. When, like it's happening in Canada, when pastors are being told, no, you either shut your mouth about this situation or that thing. We don't care what the scriptures say. We don't care what God says in the word. If you say that again, you will either be arrested, fined, or put into prison, or all of them. That's happening in, um, in Canada as these laws begin to unfold there. In Finland, we talked about how that worked out. They're being told some of the same things. What do you do? If it comes down to preaching the word or obeying the government, then we're okay to preach the word. But we have to be careful to do it in love and not to, oh, this is going to be met with unbelievable condemnation, you know? No. 
how do we win people for the Lord? With a humble heart, with a kind and gentle spirit. And so, yes, I understand. Nebi, you can do whatever you want to us, but when it comes right down to it, well, we're going to have to obey God. And he said, don't bow down to idols. Have no other God before him. All right, if that's the way you're going to be, stoke the fire seven times hotter, and then we're throwing you in. But during that trial, that fiery trial, that tribulation, what happened? Three men went into the fire, Nebi would say. And he said, but there's a fourth one there. And the fourth one is likened unto who? God. <clears throat> when you and I go through those kind of difficult times, it allows other people not to see our faith so much, but to see God's presence with us, God moving in us. We need to trust the Lord in our trials, in, in our um, tribulations. Well, what about Daniel himself? Well, you know um, that uh, Daniel uh, and King Darius were really good friends and uh, very trusted friends. And the religious leaders and some of those uh, <clears throat> some of those guys that were the leadership um, of the kingdom then came to Darius and said, Hey man, O king, live forever. We think you're awesome. And what we need to do is establish a law that says that only you can be prayed to. Only you can be worshipped. And Well, <clears throat> what did Daniel do? He turned towards Jerusalem and prayed to God. They were waiting. They said, hey, we saw you do this. They go to the king. They don't tell the king who it was that they saw that said, hey, we saw somebody not praying to you, but praying to another God. Oh, who is that? It's Daniel. What? Yeah. And the law can't be changed, king, so you're going to have to do something. <clears throat> and to all of their surprise, when Daniel was tossed into the lion's den, what happened? Nothing. Well, it doesn't work. And then King Darius said, Daniel, your God is a strong God. I'm sorry about all this, uh, and hey, where are all those guys that convinced me that we're going to change the law right now? And the law is, you guys scammed me, you played upon um, my selfishness, <clears throat> flattery. You guys are now going to be thrown in there. And they didn't. the lions didn't have to share one meal. They all had a kind of all-you-can-eat buffet. You know, so even the Lord provided for the lions uh, to have a great meal as well. So when we trust God, even when it comes to those who are in authority over us, no matter what that person or persons look like, if we just trust the Lord, then we will be able to do it. After all, what did the last chapter start by saying? That we need to be living sacrifices. Our, our lives don't belong to us anymore. They belong to God. Yeah. And what does that look like? We need to be a sacrifice in body and in mind and also our will. Lord, what is your will for me? I want you to obey. Well, you can't mean somebody like Nero. You can't mean somebody like Adolf Hitler. You can't mean somebody like Trudeau or Biden or it, no, Lord, we're going to obey you. Well, good, I'm telling you to do this. Verse 2, so anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. So if you go against what God is saying here, if I go against what God is saying here, then I am rebelling against God himself. What does God say about rebellion? that it is as the sin of witchcraft. You are worshiping Satan when you don't do what God asks you to do. So if we are to be a living sacrifice, then we really do need to bring our bodies, 
our minds and our will in conformity to what God has asked us to do. It's not an easy thing to do. So we need to trust God in those areas. Well, <clears throat> verse 3, for the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right. If you're doing right, are you going to have any problem? No. But in those who are doing wrong, if you're doing wrong, yes, the government's going to come down. And, so does that mean that all of those truckers up there in Canada are doing what's wrong? No. Not initially. Why? Because the law of their land said you have the right to protest so long as it's peaceful. Do we have that same law here? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. You have the right to protest so long as it's peaceful. Just like the protests that we saw, you know, a year or so ago, right? Those were very peaceful protests. As burn, buildings burned to the ground and as people got tossed into jail and then taken right out of jail because they got bailed out um, really quickly. That was peaceful, right? No. Lord, how is that fair? When there's guys up there that are peacefully protesting, and yet we saw in America buildings burning, and people getting killed, and looted, and their businesses devastated, and we were told by our government, it's just peaceful. <laughs> up in Washington, when that whole little country of Chaz got taken over and there was murder and rape and all kinds of stuff happening. Um, and what did they do? Oh, the government there said, no, no, this is kind of more like a, a Woodstock, a summer of love. And, you know, yeah, we know that they have superseded from uh, the Union. So, you know, they're their own little country now. We're, we're just going to let them do their thing until people started getting killed and murdered and raped and like, well, you can't exactly let things fall apart like that. <clears throat> so we have the right to peaceful protest. But then the government changes the law and makes it so that now that's illegal. Well, if the law of the land changes, what does God say? It's time to go home. And many of them this week have done just that. And I have to applaud those guys who looked at that and said, you know what? It's time to go home. Why? Because I also have a responsibility to my family, to my kids, to maybe my employer or my business or whatever it may be. Okay, we gave this a go. The government made me a terrorist, <laughs> as well as anybody who donated to their cause because the government hacked the computers, found out who was supplying uh, the money, whether it was a $20 donation or a $20,000 donation, they also uh, became um, part of the terrorist watch list of Canada. Well, when the government changes the law, what do you do? You say, okay, Lord, I'm done. What did the Lord just say <clears throat> in the previous verse? I, I don't want you to take revenge. Why? Because that belongs to me. Can God move the hearts of authority? Absolutely. David would say in the Psalms that he moves the hearts of the authority to the right and to the left. He does those things. He can do it. For the authorities, if you're doing what's right, are not going to be a problem for you. If you're doing what's wrong, it is. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Then do what's right. And they will honor you. For authorities are God's servants. So when the cop pulls you over, who has authority over it, don't resist him or her. Just say thank you. Thank you for trying to keep us safe. Thank you for making sure that I am safe and not harming other people. I really believe that you are the authority of God. I'm trying to talk your way out of the ticket that way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, the authorities are God's servants. We need to pray for those who are in authority over us, the scripture would say. And they're sent for our good. So really, Caesar Nero is there for our good. Adolf Hitler is there for our good. Sometimes it doesn't seem that way, but history tells us, yes, that is what happens because it fulfills God's purpose. What's going to happen in the end 
days. What's going to happen in the last days? There's going to be evil leadership, horrible stuff, attacks against Christians and against um, God's people. It's going to be a brutal time. But the Lord says, I'm doing all of this to save my people before I come back with my church and wipe out sin once and for all. And that's going to be a glorious time. So we've got to trust the Lord. But if you are doing wrong, of course, you should be afraid, for they have power to punish you. They are God's servants, sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. Do you want to sleep good at night? Do you want to feel good about the way that you are worshiping the Lord and are setting the example for others? Then do what the Lord says, even when it comes to government. <clears throat> Pay your taxes. Oh, man. Come on, Paul. You know what happens to that money. They abuse it. They spend it on stupid stuff like shrimp running on treadmills and just dumb stuff that just makes no sense. So why would I give my taxes to the government? Now, what I'm not saying is <clears throat> don't jump through the hoops that IRS has put there. If it's legal, well, then why not? Hey, if I put some of my money into an IRA, then it doesn't get taxed. Or if I pay some of, of my uh, income to my medical expenses, then that part of my income is not taxed. You know, the government has put the hoops out there for a reason. If you're going to do this with your finances, then we will give you the benefit here because it's in some way or another going to help the economy. So, hey, if you're going to be wise with your money, fine. But this is talking more along the lines of I'm not going to pay taxes because I don't believe that our government should be, you know, regulating my money. This is money that I earn. But you know what I am glad about? I'm glad that we pay taxes. <clears throat> because when our veterans went to war, they had money to keep us free. I'm glad that I pay taxes so that when I get out on the highway, there's not gigantic holes in the road that swallow up my car. I'm glad that I pay taxes so that there are uh, assistance for people that are going through a tough time, or so that there is some retirement for folks that have paid into the system. When we all work together, we're helping everybody. Pay your taxes. Why? Because God said so. Well, I don't think they're doing a good job. Yeah, that's probably true. They're probably not doing a good job. But the Lord didn't say, pay your taxes unless they're doing a lousy job and take it away. No, because that's going to affect our men and women in the military. It's going to affect the way things function here in the United States. Who takes revenge? Rightfully and, and truly uh, with perfect justice? God will. We need to pray for them rather than protest them. If I'm going to abound in love, if I am, if we are abounding in love, then we're going to be obedient, even in these very practical areas. Pay your taxes. Two, for these same reasons. <clears throat> for government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. can't always be an easy job. <clears throat> to give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes. He says it again. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. You remember they tried to do that to Jesus. They tried to trap him in the issue of taxes, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And what did he say? Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Let me God have a God. coin. Show me a coin. Jesus didn't have any coin with him. He didn't have to worry about that, right? He said, no, I'm not worried. I'm going to let my Lord provide. I'm going to let my God provide. And always right there. 
But he said, now whose face is on this coin? Well, Caesar. Then give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But you must also give to God what belongs to God. It's easy, easy for us to complain about government. It's easy for us to say, well, I'm going to protest. It's my right. But God would say, I would rather have you pray than protest. Let me deal with the government. I am the one that takes them and moves their heart to the right or to the left. I'm going to deal with them. I want you to be obedient to you. And I want you to give respect and honor. <clears throat> you want me to give respect to Nero? No, not necessarily the person. I want you to give it to the position. If that person is an authority, no matter how bad they are, how terrible a job they're doing, then still give respect to the position. I don't hold to some of the things that when Trump was president, that he was saying and acting like. It seemed very childish in that uh, kind of context. We need to be careful about the way we are speaking against individuals as government. We need to give respect to the position as well, whether we agree with them or not. Verse 8, <clears throat> owe nothing to anyone except for the obligation to what? Love one another. <sighs> what law is there against love? None. In fact, Jesus would say, I want you to do these two things. I want you to obey me, love me with all your heart, your mind, and your will, <laughs> your body, as he would say in chapter 12, your body, your mind, and your will. <clears throat> or your heart. But I want you to love your neighbor like you love yourself. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. If we as believers are functioning in the law of love, if we are abounding in love, then we are going to be able to move the hearts of government, of our neighbors, of our family of our communities toward the Lord. We need to love people. For the commandments say you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. These and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Why is Paul refreshing our memories when it comes to the Ten Commandments? Because we're not very good at keeping them, and we have lousy yeah. memories. Okay, fine. Then I'm just going to give you two laws, Jesus would say. Love me with all of your heart, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Paul says, you know, we're just going to narrow this down to one thing here, because you're not, not doing a good job of keeping two, so just one thing. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you do that, then you're going to be obedient to God in the first place. If you are abounding in love, then the things that he just mentioned before, you're not going to do those. You're not going to sin against your neighbor. Well, my neighbor's an idiot. My neighbor's a jerk. It's not what I, I, I didn't ask you to tell me about that. I want you to pray for them versus protest. My government, I am. Pray for them. Don't worry about the protest. Pray for them. Love them. How would you pray for yourself? What would you do in light of what's going on if you were acting that way? How would you pray for you? Pray for them. Pray for them to find love. A lot of times, some of the most difficult people we deal with are difficult because they just don't feel loved. When I went to work for the high school, <clears throat> years ago I got handed um, a youth that was very difficult nobody could really get this child to do anything and I sat down with them and even though there were <clears throat> threats, you know, kind of veiled threats in a sense um, 
toward my family. What if I did this? What if I did that? And I said, you know what? Then I would still love you. I wouldn't like what you did, but I would still love you. Even if it meant giving up what I love or family members or whatever else. And you know what? When we cross that hurdle and they knew that they were loved, everything just fell into place. Sure, there was bumps and lumps along the way, but they became a functioning member in the school. They were able to do things with other kids. Why? Because they just wanted to know that they're loved. Why? Because when you look at the background, if you looked at that person's background, you would say, look what happened here, and here, and here, and here. There was only one or two people that they could say, yes, that person loves me. Everybody else has kicked me to the curb or said, no, I'm done with you. Most of the time, we need to know that we're loved. And if we can love our neighbors ourselves, then we will do no wrong to others. And we will fulfill the law of God. Start to wrap things up here. <clears throat> this is all the more urgent. This is an urgent situation. Why? For you know how late it is. What is Paul saying here? The return of the Lord is coming very quickly. Oh, wait a minute. That was... Paul, that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yes. But do you know the day and the hour of your death? No. It may be very late for you. Or, as we are seeing what is happening in light of world events, and in light of the book of Daniel, and Ezekiel, and uh, the book of Revelation, the time is very short. Paul would say here to this church, to the church around the world today, hey, it is more important now than ever to love people because the time of the return of the Lord is nearer than it ever has been. Mm -hmm. Time is running out. You have got to, to wake up. You have got to understand that our salvation is nearer now <clears throat> than when we first believed. The night is almost gone, and the day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes, and put on the shining armor of right living. So how do I show that I really care about my neighbor? How do I love them? How do they see that I'm loving God? I need to do what the Lord says in his word. I need to live the way the Lord intended me to live. And that starts by loving people. And if I can love people, then I can certainly love God. And if God is saying that's what you need to do, that's what we need to do, then that's what we need to do. Because we belong to the day. We don't belong to the night. Why not the night? Because the deeds of evil are done in the dark. <clears throat> The light has come into our life, our life. Light and darkness do not dwell together. If Jesus is in you, then we should be burning brightly for him. So we are people of the day. We are people of the light. We must live decent lives for all to see. We are the example of what it means to be a Christian. We are the example of what it means to be loving. We are the example of what it means to be part of the nature of God. Are we doing a good job? Hmm. What did I do this last week? How many times did I complain about our government? <laughs> no matter what level. Mom, dad, teacher, you know, uh, my boss, uh, the <laughs> mayor, the, you know, on up. How are, how are we setting? Are we setting? A good example. Well, here's some things not to do, to set, or here are some things to do to set a bad example. Do not participate in the in the drunkenness of wild parties and in drunkenness. <clears throat> we need to be sober-minded. We need to be careful when it comes to the use of alcohol and those kinds of things. Why? 
because you're going to say things and do things that are just not really where your heart or even your mind are at. You need to be in control. When we open ourselves up to uh, foolishness like this, then we let foolish things into our lives and we are not generally the love. Um, <clears throat> so, no big wild drunken parties, drunkenness or sexual promiscuity. Uh, we're not talking about just one or two things. We're talking about across the board. You know, uh, we tend to um, pick on areas or people that are practicing things that are wrong uh, and then forget about other people that are still doing things wrong. Some would say, well, the church is maybe homophobic. No. We as a church are supposed to be xenophobic. We are supposed to be those who hate sin. Why? Because the wages of sin is yeah. and it, it, that's across the board, whether you're a liar, a thief, it doesn't matter. We need to stay away from these kinds of things. Sexual promiscuity, immoral living, in quarreling, and jealousy. Instead, we need to clothe ourselves with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. With the presence of the Lord Jesus. Whatever it is that you're doing, can you say, if Jesus were sitting here next to me, that he would be overjoyed at what I am doing? If we are speaking to somebody and Jesus was there, he'd say, oh, Kirk, that sounds just like what I would say. Sometimes it means keeping your mouth shut. What did Jesus do in Mark, I uh, believe, chapter 15, when he was standing before <clears throat> the government? Pilate, hey, I hear that you're king of the Jews. And what did Jesus say? He spoke not a word. Why? Because the argument wasn't going to do anything. The, that line of questioning wasn't going to lead to anything. And so that is a, sometimes the case. We need to keep our mouth shut. So we need to think about, Lord, where am I? And if you were standing next to me, and I could see you standing next to me, would I be doing the same thing? Would I be watching this movie? Would I be doing this act? Would I be uh, hanging here or there? What would I be doing? Well, <clears throat> and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Hey, you know, we're always pulled in one direction or another. Why? Why not indulge yourself? He uses that word because sin is fun. It just plain old is fun. But it's only fun, Solomon would say, it's only fun for a season. season. Because the road that leads that direction leads to death. <clears throat> we like life. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and life more. Abundant. So if you want an abundant life, then we need to live a life of love. We need to abound in love. And that starts by saying, Jesus, I want you to hang out with me. I want you to make me aware of your presence with me so that I can protect the things that come into my eyes, my ears, the things that come out of my heart through my mouth. The place where my hands are doing business. The way that I'm walking in this world. Lord, teach me to abound in your love. And when you and I are abounding in love, that is going to make such a huge difference in this world. We don't have to protest. What do we need to do? Pray. And just be loving. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so, Lord, let us be those kind of people. Help us to do what your word tells us to do today. It's not always easy, and we understand that. It's difficult for us to even read a chapter like this and say, Paul, but you just don't understand. Or, God, you just don't understand. But, Father, you do. You bore our sins that were governing this world upon your shoulders. You stretched out your hands and you took our 
our sins away. You died to set us free. You showed each and every one of us what it meant to protest. Sometimes even keeping your mouth closed. And you won. You beat sin. And you showed us how to do it. To die to ourselves and let you rule and reign in love in our lives. So Father, help us to be the kind of people that you need us to be, especially when we are in these urgent last days. Especially when, Lord, it seems like things are beginning to wrap up. Lord, let us put our faith in you and our trust in you. And above all, be obedient to you. And then, Lord, we will see our friends, our family, our communities saved and coming to church. Lord, help us to invite them so that they might hear and know just how close things really are. Thank you, Lord, for your word. It truly is a lamp unto our feet, a spotlight as to where we are to go. So let us be children of the day and not of night. Be with us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great week. Go out and enjoy the sunshine. It may even snow tonight. We'll see. We're blessed.